time for us to have a conversation um, concerning national road safety. I think it's such an important topic. You know, we mentioned it earlier on at the beginning of the show. So if you missed that, this is the conversation we're going to have right now. And I've been joined by Kwame Kodia Etiohene, and he is the head of regulations, inspections, and compliance with the National Road Safety Authority. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my How brother. are you doing? Quite well. It's good to have you here. Good to be here. Now, too, today, yeah. we want to get into the topic of the wearing of seat belts. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've seen some very interesting documentaries about yeah. wearing seat belts and not wearing seat belts yeah. and the things that can possibly happen yeah. when an accident takes place yeah. and all that. But I just want to start off by saying that I saw something uh, two nights ago. Mm -hmm. I was in an Uber. And I hadn't noticed that the driver wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Seat belt, yeah. But as we approached a police checkpoint, mm. I noticed it because he suddenly pulls the seatbelt. Right. And I asked him, I said, excuse me, are you wearing the seatbelt for the sake of the policeman yeah. or for your own life? Yeah. Tell us how important and why it's so important. Well, th thanks so much and good morning to your viewers. Um, it's an unfortunate um, occurrence. Um, because many would do that when they do not have a better appreciation of mm. the significance of the seatbelt. So when the manufacturer um, manufactures a car, and even within the uh, space of our laws, yeah. there are certain equipment and part of the vehicles wh which is often referred to as a use requirement, mm. which is to say that without uh, those facilities, uh, one should be constrained from using okay. the vehicle. The seatbelt is one. Mm. It's such an important safety um, device. Um, you know, as you use a vehicle on the road, there's a likelihood for um, collisions, incidents, crashes, and one of the mechanisms put in place to limit the associated risk of yeah. these crashes yeah. is the seatbelt. Mm. So it is not the for uh, aesthetic purposes, mm -hmm. neither is it there because you, are, I mean, you shy away from prosecution, or you don't want to have problems with the police. Ultimately, that is the, the consequence um, that may occur at the end of the tale. Yeah. But it's important as drivers and um, and, and users of the road mm -hmm. to appreciate that it is in there for a purpose, mm -hmm. and the purpose is to provide a certain safety cushion. Yeah when it is that you have suffered a crash mm. Uh, mm. to limit the impact yeah. of the crash. And that's why we have these devices mm. in, our, in our vehicles. I, so so I, I notice a lot of the times that if there happens to be a road crash, yeah. um, if usually, you know, somebody survives, some people don't survive, you tend to find that people in the back seat yeah tend to be more harmed, yeah. you know, than those in the front seat. Yeah. Um, now, you think it's a head-on collision, so you assume that those in front, you know, will probably face more impact. Yeah. But it seems to be that we've emphasized so much on the wearing of seat belts, focusing on the front seat, yeah. as opposed to everybody within the vehicle. Yeah. Talk to us about You're that. right. Um, there's something we call secondary collision, which is that so when you are in a vehicle and it's moving yeah. and there is an impact, mm. if you are not on a seat belt, even though the vehicle will likely come to a stop, you you will still be moving. Mm. So you could be at the back seat. Newton's law of motion. Yes, and you'll be moving <laughs> at the same pace yeah. as a moving vehicle. Mm. Without a seat belt, which will put you in check and arrest you to your seat, keep you firm and intact, you are likely to, to suffer yeah. the consequence of the secondary collision. So that's what happens. So that's how come if you are the back seat or in the middle seat, um, you would continue to move as mm. though the vehicle is moving, then you are likely to suffer severe injuries without mm. the, the seat belt. Mm. And that's, that's why we advocate that uh, wherever you find yourself in, the, in a moving vehicle, yeah. You must, as a matter of uh, your culture, develop the, the attitude of putting on 
yeah. the seat belts, whether you are the front seat, yeah. the back, middle, mm. to the extent that the seat belts have been provided, mm. um, you must use them yeah. to avoid the consequence of the secondary collision. Mm. Mm. There, 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 there seems to be also another mindset that um, sometimes I, I've noticed that people have and say, and, and I would say, I'll admit that uh, sometimes I've also been guilty of this, yeah. where you say, Oh, I'm just going around the corner, <laughs> you know. Um, so there's no need for the seatbelt. Yeah. But then you think of the seatbelt and you're thinking, okay, long, longer journey, yeah. therefore seatbelt. You know, and as I'm just going around the corner, I don't need to put the seatbelt on. Um, if you yeah, take, so take us into that. it's true. I mean, some have given all kinds of excuses, uh, reasons not to use it. Mm. But is it even within urbanized environments, yeah. the danger is that you are not too sure of the the next driver. Yeah, uh, he, I mean, he could be asked to drive within mm. a 30 kilometer range, but he could be flying at 50 or 80. Mm. So you may desire to reach out to an activity just next door, yeah. uh, and yet uh, an oncoming vehicle with such a, a serious impact may just destabilize you. Mm. So it doesn't matter what distance. I mean, if it's um, a 5 or 10 meter distance um, we need to develop the attitude mm. you get on the vehicle you put it on in fact if you were in charge of the vehicle it is always advisable that before the others strap up mm. or buckle up um, you you may hesitate from even yeah. moving the vehicles yeah. so, so that subconsciously we can build that um, that, that attitude is there any situation I'm going to share a little story yeah. with you is there any situation that you feel that um, uh, is ever justified not to wear seatbelts? I can think of just one. Okay. Which is that um, in a, in, on health grounds. Okay. So the doctor just left. Yeah. Yes, a woman who is pregnant, okay. who has been advised medically mm. uh, not to put on yeah, the seatbelt, seat belt, could yeah. be excused, mm. except for that, that situation. situation. Yeah. I, I cannot uh, phantom any other exception for, yeah. for non-users. <laughs> my my form, form 5 physics teacher um, told us a story. Uh, this is so many years ago. And um, he was just trying to say how sometimes odd things happen, yeah. you know. And the whole idea of wearing the seatbelt is that it's, it's a must all the time, yeah. every time, no excuses. But he gave us a story of when he used to live in Kenya. Yeah. And um, a friend of his had an accident yeah. and they were going off an embankment yeah. right and they got you know how the vehicle is going off but there's a railing yeah. and the vehicle got trapped on the on the edge yeah. now part of the part of the railing broke yeah. off when the imp vehicle impacted it and went through the vehicle mm. now he said interestingly when they found his friend okay um if he had been wearing a seat belt yeah. He would have been strapped to the back of the seat, yeah. and the, the railing would have gone right through him. Yeah. But because he wasn't wearing a seat belt, yeah. he was thrown forward, and the railing went through the back. Yeah. It sounds like a perfect excuse not to wear yeah. seat belts. Uh, well, you, yes, but you see, in the course of our work, mm. uh, there are thousand and one experiences. Those are convenient reasons not to. Yeah. But in reality, in fact, when you take nine out of ten crash situations and you, t you, you yeah. have to engage survivors, mm. it is often the case that they don't suffer the severe consequence because mm -hmm. of um, the, the use of, of seatbelt. In fact, research has proven that without the seatbelt, you are 30 times Mm. Um, uh, at More risk, likely, yeah, yes, yeah. of suffering these these consequences. Otherwise, on the face of it, it may appear that yes, it's just like <laughs> the, the the crash helmet when the women say to the stay, stay <laughs> their hair, their hair, yeah, yeah. Uh, or it's just a short distance, yeah. and, and and so on and so forth. But it is there for a purpose, mm. and the engineering that went into the design of a vehicle yeah. taught that. Once you have the seat belt, mm. it does a lot of good in trying to keep you mm. uh, afloat in the yeah. event of a crash. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about the legal side of things. Yeah. Um, punitive measures. I, I feel almost as though um, we, we are not going hard enough on people not wearing seat belts. And this is what is allowing 
Um, some, sometimes you see that the drivers are not doing it, you know. Um, I'm just going to juxtaposition that vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the situation where you look at our, our public transportation, for example, yeah. where there aren't the seat belts, seat belts yeah. available, you yeah. know, for passengers. Yeah. They are for the drivers, but yeah. not the passengers, you know. So what... what, what, what yeah, so I agree. Mean? I think there are policy issues that would have to be resolved on that side of um, the conversation. Mm. I, I recall that a couple of years ago, there were attempts to... Um, introduce a seat belt yes, in these buses, but was shelved for mm. one reason or the other. Mm. But ultimately, it's a conversation that we must have mm. going forward, given the importance that yeah. comes with it, especially for long distance mm. um, um, uh, vehicles. But otherwise, uh, on the legal side, there are consequences. Others have argued that it is not severe enough. Mm. In fact, until 2007 or 8, where the existing law then was reviewed okay. it was more harsher than it is now mm. but we believe that if the police and all of us were to find ways to even enforce the law yeah. as it is now mm. um, it could engineer some level of mm. interest and compliance today if you were found guilty of not wearing the seat belt yeah. uh, you could suffer a fine of up to a hundred penalty units or a thousand two hundred Ghana cities okay. Uh, in addition or in the alternative, mm. you could also spend up to six months in imprisonment okay. for just not putting, putting on the seatbelts. Seat yeah. And if we could get as much support from the enforcement agencies mm. and, and make um, some scapegoats of a few of us, mm. uh, we are sure that yeah. the, the dynamics might change. Otherwise, for the last couple of years, our focus has been to try to promote so that users would begin to appreciate the safety benefits mm. without having to focus so much on the consequence yeah. of the, I mean, the legal consequence <laughs> of not putting them mm. on. But mm. I agree that we must find a way to balance the two yeah. so that whilst we educate, we can also enforce mm. to ultimately uh, shape um, um, road user behavior. Okay. All right. Anyway, I have a suggestion. I'll tell you later. I yeah. think that the, the, the cameras that we have in town now, yeah. we should start arresting people based on cameras that are catching people yeah. wearing without seatbelts and yeah. not wait for the police. Yeah, I, yeah the automation, yeah. Uh, that will also help a lot. Yeah, I think and it you will. cut down the human interest. For the fact that people will know that you don't even need to see the police for you to get arrested, yeah. you know, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure we'll continue this conversation sometime next week. All right. So I've been speaking with Kwame Kodia Etiohene. He's the head of regulations, inspections, and compliance with the National Road Safety Authority. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV.